We were living down in San Diego when you and I were both professors at UC San Diego. And uh, we had moved into a house and I found a pair of glasses, a pair of reading glasses uh, in a closet. And, you know, we asked around, you know, did any of the grandparents uh, leave some glasses behind? N nobody seemed to know who they were. So we, we finally just decided like, well, I guess the people who moved out of the house just left a pair of glasses, you know, in, this, in the back of this closet. And then I tried the glasses on and I looked at my phone up close and was just like, oh my God, wait a second. I didn't realize how blurry my near vision was. And this is back, I was about 40, 42, something like that. So, so I didn't even realize until I put on the readers. And these were, you know, 1.25 magnifiers, you know, so Not also huge, mild yeah, ones, fairly mild, mild yeah, ones. Yeah. And I'll tell you, I got addicted because who doesn't like good vision, right. right? I mean, oh my God, now I can make the type smaller on my phone. I can, you know, it was wonderful. And you can relax a bit. I, I mean, the musculature that's responsible for, for moving the lens and focusing the eye and then all this extraocular mu musculature. I mean, we forget, I mean, I'm definitely going crow's feet um, around my eyes, uh, probably because I you know, squint or something, but you know, just the ability to relax one's face. It just yeah. feels like, you know, yeah. more, more energy I feel like can be devoted to what we're actually looking at. Yeah. I'm not making light of yeah. this. Yeah. Well, pretty soon I just kept that one pair of glasses with me all the time. And I would just keep them in a pocket and whip them out whenever I was, you know, working at near using my phone at a little greater distance, like a typical computer distance, I could still see the computer fine. So it really started for like kind of that close up phone. It was, it was, I could get into here, but not all the way into here. And um, yeah, and then pretty soon I was just totally addicted. And so, you know, then I had to go buy 10 pairs and leave them, one by the bedside table, you know, one in the car, one in the computer bag, one on every desk I work at. Them. Yeah, because I'd leave them anywhere right. and forget them. You're and that way I could just, all. yeah, Absolutely exactly, you know, sure. yeah. So, um, yeah, so whether using the readers accelerates the progression of dependence on the readers is still uh, not, you know, that's still up for debate. You know, some studies say maybe yes, some studies say maybe no. But certainly psychologically, we get addicted to good easy vision. And if you don't have to squint and you're, if you're not straining your muscles and all of a sudden the, the text on your phone looks crisper again, uh, boy, that's addictive. You're, you're going to like good vision. And so it feels like you're getting dependent. And how much of that is change in the eye muscles and how much of that is just the psychology of wanting to have good vision? I think probably the jury's a little bit out on that point. But point being, you're de either, either way, your dependence will grow. Mm -hmm. And as you continue to age, 40s, 50s, up until about 60, 65, the ability to shape that lens gets weaker and weaker and weaker. And so you need to move from the 0.5s to the 1.0s to the 1.5s. and To the Coke bottle. To the Coke well, bottle. thankfully right. not. You right. eventually max out yeah. at about plus 2.5 or plus 3 yeah. because that's the amount of extra refractive power that you need in magnifiers to take the equivalent of your infinity viewing and bring it up to 14 inches to read it near, basically. You need a plus three, and then you don't need any lens, eye muscle action whatsoever. So you kind of max out around 2.5s or threes. Mm -hmm. So because most people will hit this somewhere in their 40s, this sort of like, gosh, I'm having trouble on the phone. I think most people actually use that. That's like kind of the first time for a lot of people. They're like, well, I, I guess I should go to the eye office, right? See the optometrist or maybe ophthalmologist. And when they go in, they should be getting the standard in either of those offices will be to give you a full screening exam, including maybe it's the puff test or a blue light test or a little pen that, that can check your eye pressure and having a look inside and seeing if your retina and optic nerve look healthy. It's kind of screening for all the main diseases. And so, and they'll tell you at that point, hey, you'll look great. If you feel like your glasses aren't doing it for you in a year or three years, come back. Or they might say, hey, I've detected something. I'm worried about you. 
and they'll set up a routine for your ongoing eye care.